Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I am in science fiction land with a real life battle mech and two battle mech designers from Megabots. Megabots. <laughs> Megabots. <laughs> Welcome to Megabots World Headquarters, guys. World he I was amazed. Like, I heard about you it's guys impressive. and I was all over. I was you know, tweeting you out all the time. And then somebody said, hey, do you know they live near you? And I was like, what? Of course they live near We're me. practically neighbors. <laughs> yeah, this is the Bay Area. We're full of crazy, nutty people building amazing things like giant six-ton battle robots. And this, the best thing about this is it is going to battle something for real. Because you guys have sent out the challenge. We challenged right. Japan to a giant robot duel. A giant they robot accepted. duel? Yes. So the, the first ever mech fight. International mech duel. Yeah, I mean, never mind on. battle bots. This right. is full scale, you know, people riding inside mech this combat. thing. Combat. Yep. Giant mech piloted combat. robots. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, this is like the space race. I mean, it really is. It's like instead of US the versus robot Russia, race. right? Yep. There was, yeah. You know, they built a lot of tech. They didn't go to, need to go to the moon to invent all that technology, but it was amazingly cool when they did it. The technology you're inventing. You could have invented it for other things, but isn't it cool sure. to have a giant but battling is, robot? It's the, the coolest, dream. It's, it's the, the dream. It is the dream. It's the rule of cool. Yeah. This yeah. is just absolutely amazing. This is the Mark II. Uh, she's 12,000 pounds, 11 and a half feet tall squatting, 15 feet tall standing. Uh, we played a lot of Battletech and Mech Warrior when we were kids, so we're going for the like blocky, chunky look and the long range combat that you see featured in MechWarrior. That's kind of our inspiration for this robot. Um, so again, yeah, 11 and a half feet tall squatting, 15 feet tall standing, um, about eight feet long, eight and a half feet wide at the base. The shoulders are 13 feet wide, which is a little bit wow. ridiculous. Uh, and the right arm cannon can fire a three pound paint cannonball at 120 miles an hour. The left arm missile launcher can fire a rack of 20 missiles that each weigh about a pound at 150 miles an hour. And people say, oh, paintball, that's kind of boring until they see like a staved in car door from a single cannonball shot. It's like, we're, we're not kidding around, right? Like, we don't want to kill people, but we want it to look really freaking cool. So this is the best baseball pitcher ever. It is the uh, <laughs> softball pitcher at like two or three times <laughs> most softball speeds. So if you really want to get taken out, <laughs> yeah. you can try and play a game. Uh, but yeah, so, the robot looks like construction equipment, it is not. It has two tracks that were actually pulled off a of skid steer. Uh, they top at around two and a half miles an hour right now. But the leg system, the pelvis, everything else about this robot is totally custom. It is painted to look like a piece of construction equipment. Uh, we chose to kind of go for that down and dirty, rough and tumble look. Um, but everything here is totally made from scratch. So it's like laser cut, half inch and three quarter inch thick plate steel for the legs structurally welded together. Uh, the chassis is two inch tube stock uh, for the torso and then a bunch of like big iron frames for the arms and uh, all sorts of hydraulic cylinders and helical actuators and stuff like that. So we can, uh, can kind of walk around and we can talk a little bit about the weapon systems and the engineering behind this. Uh, so for the guns, for the missile launchers, these are all air cannons right now. So you pressurize one uh, air tank in the back of each barrel, and that is perfectly tuned to fire off a missile at 150 miles an hour. So right now you load it in from the front, you fire it out. Basically a really well-tuned potato cannon with totally custom ammunition. The designs that we have for later versions of these weapons are fully reloaded, refueled from a CO2 tank, so that you can actually have like five or 10 reloads per one of these guys, or up to 20 reloads for the actual cannon through a revolver system. Um, we keep on running. Oh, we have gun cams everywhere. So this is your targeting system? This is the targeting system. Matt will talk a little bit about that in a bit. Um, the actuation of these guys. So the whole system's hydraulic. runs on a 2500 PSI hydraulic power unit. Um, these guys are these really awesome helical actuators. Mm -hmm. uh, that move each of the arm joints. There are four arm joints per side. Uh, you can see a, a valve stack in the arm itself. Basically, this frame exists to hold on armor plating. Uh, the valve stack is kind of cool. It's both 
uh, manual and electronically controlled. So we can both control it from inside the cockpit or we can jump on the arms like Mad Max mm -hmm. and actually drive the robots limbs ourselves. Oh, wow, excellent. <laughs> Our power unit is here. It's a uh, common off-the-shelf power unit for right now. So this is an internal combustion engine, right? So There's no nuclear batteries <laughs> or <laughs> fusion yet. cores just yet. No mimer, no, uh, no Oh, fusion. yeah, no mimer. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Working I on it. It's, uh, it's a long process. We've got to start somewhere. Yes. So yeah, this is a 24 horsepower gas engine powering a gear pump for our hydraulic system. Um, it allows the robot to stand up and move its torso and all that jazz. We actually have a split control system. We have a driver in back and a gunner in front. The driver sees out cameras in the front and back in order to drive. Um, the gunner moves the arms, targets, fires, etc. I also note that in Pacific Rim they needed two pilots. Right? Yeah. Exactly. And we are we are actually uh, near San Francisco where the, the aliens, the kaiju came on board, came home. You're entirely correct. And in fact, this is all to deal with a threat from across the Pacific, right? Yep. This is Pacific Rim. This is real. Pacific Rim. Yes. Except we divide it the smart way instead of left and right. <laughs> so, there's that. Hey. All right, so we're going to take a tour of the inside of the Megabot now. Uh, this is the cockpit here. The canopy opens up on these gas shock, uh, shock springs. Um, and we had originally designed this grate here to break up the paint cannonballs and let the paint come through. So in the first vision or iteration of our combat, uh, we would have paint projectiles hitting that, breaking up and covering the pilots uh, with paint. So you still get the experience of the paint without the you pain. You still get covered in this horrible... I, I wouldn't say there's no paint. pain. Uh, <laughs> you shot Matt, it's not a pleasant experience. Yeah. Uh, okay, not the fatal bruising that would be achieved <laughs> by uh, getting hit. There's video of that on megabots.com. <laughs> Watch that. Um, so yeah, let's step on up. Okay. We were really good about designing a uh, egress system. Ingress? Is that ingress? Ingress. ingress. Yeah. Uh, so um, we actually designed this cockpit um, at, sort of after a fighter jet cockpit. So one person sits in front of the other, um, and the gunner sits in the front, the driver sits in the back. And we split those roles up for kind of a specific reason. And that's because um, we grew up playing these video games where Usually the one player, you, control both where the robot's walking and where it's shooting. And what happens is you turn the torso of the robot sideways, and then you keep walking forward, which is that way, and then you run into all kinds of buildings and trees and stuff. Little children. And stuff like that and kill children. It's yeah. terrible. Um, so, which is fine for a video game, but in real life that kind of won't fly. So we split those two roles up. The person in the back, all they do is worry about not running into buildings and trees and killing children. And then the front person um, worries about actually killing children uh, with the weapon systems. Um, no. so, the, so the person in the front controls the arms uh, and the guns and aims uh, and the targeting system and stuff like that. And we have, now I'm seeing this, this is an X-52 Pro joystick. Yes, these were like off the shelf uh, Linux compatible joysticks that worked with ROS like straight off the bat. So we're using, um, like I said, ROS, it's called Robot Operating System on a Laptop to control the control systems of this robot. So um, I can actually power this up and you'll see our targeting computers come on, uh, which is Ooh. aimed at V's left nipple right now, is probably what we will be targeting. Um, and so these are direct feeds from the cameras that are mounted to the weapon systems. So you actually get a targeting reticle and a screen where each arm is pointed and that's kind of what the gunner has to pay attention to. So like, what are, what are you actually shooting at? The joysticks, of course, um, control the arms and, and where they're, where they're going to fire uh, and stuff like that. So these plug directly into a laptop. That laptop is running all of the control software. It talks over a CAN bus to uh, the valve stack ups that are in the arms. Mm -hmm. um, and those have all the hydraulic valves in them. Uh, those actuate the arms, the hydraulic actuators in the arms. So, um, kind of crawling farther back in here. Okay. So now I'm in the driver's seat, um, and the driver controls all of the track base, the legs, and the pivoting uh, of the torso for now. 
Um, we want to move that feature to the gunner yeah. Yeah. Um, with these levers. And we left that manually controlled, so you're actually moving the spool inside the hydraulic valve directly with the lever. We wanted it super, super robust because while we're working out all the software bugs, if uh, I left a minus sign somewhere accidentally in the code, um, you end up, you know, sitting on something or driving over something you didn't Rockets intended, have so. been destroyed because of that very mistake. Yes. So we're, uh, we're kind of like uh, testing the robustness of the system with the, with the weapons first uh, before we kill the people driving inside with the software bug. Here we have our trusty parking brake uh, of the robot. So there was actually a parking brake built into the skid steer uh, track. So you got to pump that a little bit and that releases the uh, parking call within the brake. And then we're good, to, uh, we're good to start this thing up and drive it around a little bit. Ooh, that's a... Uh... Atomic batteries to power turbines to yeah. speed and all that, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Whatever. It's not... In a real life match. Inside the giant megabot. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is what it's like this, in the future. This is a feeling of real power. <laughs> oh I wish these guns were hooked up. Oh is it? Okay. Uh, better not touch that button then. Now we're going up. Oh yeah. Standing up to 15 and a half feet tall. Ah, now we are truly a formidable force to be reckoned with. Mere flesh cannot compete with the power of real steel. Citizen, stand down. <laughs> you have 20 seconds to comply. <laughs> Oh yeah, missile launcher. Okay, so the button that says rapid fire. Rapid fire. That's the one that's gonna fire. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this live in three. What are we gonna shoot at? It's, it's not loaded with anything, but it's Good. pressurized. Okay. So it's just gonna make some like boom, boom, boom noises. Mis missile system missile pressurized. System is armed. We ready? Yep. Rapid fire commence. Oh wow. You got 20 shots in there. So That's what it's going to be like. This is awesome! Life mech combat. This is awesome! That is just awesome. Yeah. There are for, people overuse the word awesome every day. Right now, I am not misusing the word awesome. There is nothing more appropriate for the word awesome. I am literally, my heart is palpitating. I am gasping for breath at the power of this thing. <laughs> the future of sports. The future of sports is upon us. I tell you, we need it's to... The sports apocalypse. The sport apocalypse, you have. Robo sport apocalypse. Mission complete. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. Oh. Giant robot weapons fired. Are you still alive? Still we alive. missed. We missed. Yes! <laughs> oh my god! Sir, you are my new best friend! <laughs> Both of you! You can come visit whenever you like. <laughs> um, next time I'm bringing the kids. <laughs> there you go. Oh my god, this really is the future of something awesome here. Like, as I said, this is like the Saturn V of <laughs> robot sports. <laughs> it's pretty badass. Megabots, <laughs> like seriously. So they have a Kickstarter. It's got about a week to go. They're going to make the gold. The question is, how much more awesome can they make this thing for the battle against Japan? And remember, this is 
you know, countries fighting. This is for propaganda. This is for, this is national, for national pride. pride exactly. National pride. National the pride. The more money we and raise, the better chance we have of defeating Japan. And, and let's let's be entirely clear here. The more money we raise, the better the robot is. The better the fight is. The more awesome the fight is that you get to watch more from home. More destruction. More chaos. More, more wreckage. More, more awesome. robot battle. Yes. Let's do it. Let's do it. So yeah, Megabots, check their Kickstarter. Seriously, back it. If you're American, back it for National Pride. Get one if, of these sweet t-shirts. Yes. Yep. If you're not American, back it because it's awesome fighting robot. This is Matt Orline with Megabots. And Guy Cavalcanti with Megabots. <laughs> I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. <laughs>